Hello, my name is Abigail and welcome back to Polyglot Progress and also welcome to the first video of 2021. Fittingly, this is going to be a New Year's and planning related video. New Year's of 2019, I posted a video where I flipped through my 2018 language learning bullet journal and showed you all my kind of completed spreads from that year and then showed you my layout for 2019. But as I was on my hiatus from language learning at the start of 2020, I honestly didn't even really do much bullet journaling when it came to language learning, so I didn't really have much to share at the time. Time. but over the course of the year I really found a lot of spreads that I feel like really are exactly how I want to plan out and track my language learning. So today I just wanted to show you how I've set up my language learning bullet journal for 2021. It's not that many spreads, it's just a couple that are going to help me over the course of the year and then I'll show you how I'm kind of planning and tracking month to month. But before we get into that I just want to touch on a couple of things that always seem to kind of come up whenever I make videos about bullet journaling for my language learning. The first thing to note is that I have two bullet journals. I have the one that I use for just my life as a whole, and then I have a separate bullet journal that's dedicated to language learning specific stuff. This year is actually my sixth bullet journal. I've been doing it since my senior year of high school. I'd always had a hard time finding a planner that suited my needs. Mainly, I didn't feel like normal planners that I could buy at the store had enough lines for me to write out my homework for all the classes I was taking, and I also didn't like the idea of moving to a digital planner because in high school I wasn't allowed to have a phone or a computer out, so I couldn't have used a digital planner planner. And I also really, really like the feeling of using pen and paper to plan things. I actually feel significantly less overwhelmed and stressed when I write out a to-do list versus when I type it out. I don't know the reasoning, the psychology behind that, but for some reason it makes a huge difference in how I feel about the workload that I have. But in switching over to a bullet journal, a lot more happened than just giving me a lot of space to write out my to-do list. I discovered that I could plan things other than just my day-to-day. -day. I discovered that I could track things in my life. I discovered that it could be used as a creative outlet and I could use it almost as kind of an art journal as well. This is less so the case in my language bullet journal but you'll definitely see that a little bit of that comes into play this year with my spreads but definitely most of that is happening just in kind of my normal regular bullet journal. Which brings me to the reason that I have a language bullet journal separate from my normal bullet journal. For my first two years of bullet journaling I actually tracked all of my language stuff and put my language goals in my regular bullet journal. I did not have a separate place for them. But at the start of 2018 I decided to just try out moving all of my language stuff into a different notebook. I have always liked to plan my language learning on more of a calendar year type scale and then I wouldn't necessarily go off of quarters like I'm doing this year. Most of the time then it would be broken down into semesters and breaks and things because I had the most time to study during breaks. While my normal bullet journal was set on the scholastic year so it would always start in August and end in August and that meant that mid 2018 I would have to be going back to my old bullet journal to look at all of my language stuff from the start of the year and I just wanted a separate place that I could look at my goals for the year and I could look at my trackers etc. I used to be very opposed to the idea of multiple bullet journals. I thought that it kind of took away the point of being able to create your own planner because if you can make it, why not put it all in one place? But having a separate place to just track language habits does work for me. So although I might like the idea of one bullet journal, I know now that having a separate bullet journal just for my language stuff is what works most effectively for me. The other thing that I really like about it is that I'm able to look back and see my progress in languages a lot easier. Because it's just language stuff, I can just flip back through the years and see how far I've come in each language, how much time I've put into languages, what I was kind of focused on in the beginning versus now, etc. I think it's really important for language learning to be able to go back and look at how far you've come. And so I have found that the bullet journal helps for that. So currently what my planning system looks like is I have my regular bullet journal where I plan out my goals for the year, for quarters, for months, and then I also just have weekly kind of spreads that are a bit like a regular planner. They just are a little bit more fitted to my needs. I've also got other things like lists of ongoing tasks, spreads that I might need for moving. Overall, I'd say that's the hub of where I organize everything in my life. Then I also have a paper calendar where I'll write down my work schedule, any appointments I may have, any kind of time-based things, and I will also put due dates for projects and things like that. This was something that I started in college because it meant that I could write down my due dates for all of my assignments and exams and things like that. Now it honestly mainly serves as a way to be able to look at when I have things going on. Obviously I have that written down in my bullet journal, but it can be nice for me to see the whole month and kind of know what weeks are going to be a little bit busier, that sort of thing. I'm a very visual person with that kind of thing. 
everything and having it all in one calendar just works out really nicely for me. And then finally, I have this bullet journal for language learning. So that will be where I keep track of my goals for the year and each quarter. That's where I will keep track of my study habits and routines that I'm trying to put in place and also where I can just generally have a gauge for my progress in language learning. The biggest disclaimer that I want to put on this video is that this is the planning system that works best for me. I have come to this after years and years of using these things and adjusting tiny things or in some cases trying drastic changes like moving into a whole new bullet journal for my language learning. So what works for me might not work for you or it might work for you but it might require a little bit of adjustment. I say pretty much in every video that we all learn differently and we all do things differently. So what works for me might not be the exact solution for you, but I feel like it's especially important on videos like this. The reason I'm sharing this isn't to say that I have found the secret to planning or the secret to bullet journaling for language learning. And on the opposite end, I am also not sharing for you to tell me that I am wasting my time planning or planning incorrectly. The reason that I post these videos and that I'm posting this video today is just to give you some insight into how I plan my language learning and what I have found works for me. And through that, maybe give you ways to plan and track your language learning in order to make a little bit more progress. And then finally, before I start showing the bullet journal, I have talked a lot about tracking things in language learning and I want to touch on why I do that. Through tracking my language learning I'm able to see what types of things I've been doing and focusing on in my language learning and also in my case as I do have multiple projects going on which languages I maybe haven't given as much attention to recently and through seeing these things I'm able to adjust my methods and kind of fill in any gaps that I see. And in terms of things like journal entries written or books read or films watched I'm not actually tracking so that I can hit the specific number of films. I'm setting goals for a specific number of films and tracking how many films I've watched in, say, German, so that way I can begin to build this habit and routine of watching films in German. Because I'm able to see my progress and I also track kind of specifically what I'm doing in languages, it also allows me to note what methods are working well for me and what methods are not working so well. So if I spend a whole month doing a ton of flashcards and I haven't really seen that much progress versus a month where I've been reading a lot and feel like I've picked up a lot of vocabulary, I kind of know then that reading is more so the way to go to pick up vocabulary as opposed to doing flashcards. Overall, through tracking these things, I'm able to build habits and I'm able to figure out what is working well for me and what's not and adjust as needed. Much like figuring out what planning system is most efficient for you, language learning is all about trying new things and figuring out what is most efficient for you and what is most efficient for you in that language. What works for me in German is not actually what works for me in Bulgarian, so language learning is not only a process of getting to know a language for me, but getting to know how to get to know a language. And having these check-ins and trackers and that sort of thing really just allows me to make note of those things and adjust at a quicker pace than I would otherwise. And on that note, I am going to show you what I have set up for this year. So starting off, we have my goals spread for this year. So this page literally just lays out all of my goals for the year. I actually first did this digitally and on various sheets of paper so that I could change and add and delete and rearrange as I planned my year and didn't feel any pressure to write it perfectly in my bullet journal. Again, I have something like this in my regular bullet journal for my goals for the year just for the rest of my life. Things like fitness and my relationships and finances and everything else. This spread really just touches on my language learning goals. So the overall organization of this is really quite simple. I gave myself a theme for 2021 so I wanted to give that a nice little space where I could look at it pretty frequently and kind of go back to that. So right on this first page I have my four focuses for the year, the top two being Bulgarian and ASL, which are the two languages that I am a beginner in this year, and then the two bottom ones being German and Spanish, which I am not a beginner in. I'm at an intermediate level, so those I've been viewing almost as secondary focuses. Though they are as much of a focus for me as Bulgarian and American Sign Language, I don't necessarily have to give them time in the same way I give Bulgarian and American Sign Language, whereas those two beginner languages I'm really focused on studying and learning the basics and putting that kind of energy in. German and Spanish are something that I'm really working on improving through reading and watching things and talking with people, just kind of more immersive activities. For each language on here, I have first my focus for the year written with a star next to it. That's overall what is guiding me this year for each of those languages. And then below that, I have bullet points next to all of my goals for the language for that year. So those might be more concrete things like finishing a textbook or taking a certain number of lessons, but they're all things that are going to help 
get me closer to achieving the thing in the focus. Then on the next page, I have the two languages I'm just working on maintaining this year, French and Italian. Below that is Japanese, which might be a focus at some point this year, might just remain a dabbling project. And then my two projects that, if I study them at all, will just be dabbling projects for the year. And below that, I just have a habits section. So in these 2021 goals, a lot of them are concrete things like do this thing, be able to do this thing, but I also have things that are habits that I want to build. So things like journaling a certain number of times per month or reading more often a language. So I just noted for myself what I'm hoping to do monthly and daily this year, just so I have a kind of an easier way to look at it. In past years, as well as my language goals, I would have a spread that talked about my language levels at the start of each year. And then at the end, I would come back to it and put my new levels and kind of how I felt they'd changed. And while this worked for me for several years and was seemingly a great way to be able to see my progress over the years, I talked a bit in my 2021 goals video about how I am no longer setting goals tied to language levels and I just feel like that is not something that works well for me anymore. And I also found that I no longer liked the idea of this spread for myself so much because I feel like putting it as a bar or something to color in made it feel like there was an end point. Whereas now with my language learning beliefs, I just don't think there is an end. I think there are things that I could improve upon in my native language. I don't think I'm at a full bar in English. I view it all as significantly more fluid now and I feel like showing that I've moved forward or moved back doesn't really mean that much for me. So what I'm trying out for the first time this year to kind of replace that is this 2021 log spread. I've never done this before, but I think it actually might work really well for me. There's a space in this for each month of the year and then a block at the end just to talk about how my year was as a whole. This past year I started making monthly recap vlogs with my language learning and I've really liked that through those I'm able to see my progress and my feelings about a chunk of time in my learning throughout the year. And I'm going to continue doing that this year, but I just wanted a way to have it all for the whole year at one glance so I can look back and see how far I've come and just remember the tone and the highs and the lows of that year. This is a way for me to look back at my progress, not just in languages, but as a language learner in general. So I don't know exactly what I will stick in each of these quite yet, but what I'm envisioning is things like writing about how I felt that month. Did I feel like it was a good month for my language learning, a bad month for my language learning? I can write about anything new that I maybe tried out and how I felt about that. Overall, at the end of the year, I will have a way to kind of look back at each month and then I will also have this block just to write about I thought that it was a really great 2021 for my language learning or I didn't really feel like it was. Next to that, I have a monthly habits and a trackers spread. Like I said, there's a lot of habits and reoccurring monthly goals that I have, so I just wanted a spread to specifically keep track of how I'm doing for those. Obviously, I will be writing when I do those things in my language log, which you'll see in a minute, but as I've said a couple of times now, I just wanted one place where all of that was and I could just look at it and know if I'd been keeping up with that habit or not. So for this, I have three habits that I am tracking, watching movies, reading articles, and journaling. So for all of my notebooks and all of my bullet journaling and whatnot, I have a color that represents each language I study, so here that is also the case. So for each month, I put the number of movies that I'm hoping to watch and colored it accordingly. So for example, I'm hoping to watch one German movie a month, two two Spanish movies a month and two French movies a month. So I just added the five boxes for each month for movies and then colored them accordingly. I'm gonna color them all in or put a check or something like that when I accomplish that. Same for articles and same for journaling. Overall, it's just a way for me to make sure that I keep up with those habits. Below that, I have trackers. So I want to take 75 language lessons or have 75 language exchanges or more over the course of this year, and I wanna read 50 books or more over the course of this year, but that's a yearly thing. I don't have specific month goals, so they didn't really fit into the monthly habits kind of spread. So instead what I did is I made these two trackers. So this one is for my language lessons or language exchange calls. What I've done is I've made this very poorly drawn jar and for each language lesson I take I will draw a circle, color it in the color of the language, and write how long it is. So I've only done one language lesson so far this year so you can see that I have colored in a 30 minute ball for Bulgarian. And then also just to show you kind of what it will look like, I drew in a few other circles and I also wrote in the one hour span lesson that I have this week and the 90 minute ASL lesson that I have this week. When I take those, I will color them in their colors as well. I like this one because not only does it allow me to track 
the lessons that I've taken, the length of them, the language that they're in, all of that, but it is also not limited to 75, so while 75 is my goal, I would love to take more than that. Currently, I'm trying to take three a week. I don't think it's sustainable for me financially, so likely I will have to just cap myself off at 75 this year, unless I can find some exchange partners that I speak with for free, but I really like that if I end up taking 100, or I end up taking more than that, or somewhere between 75 and 100, I'm able to just draw in the circles and make it as much or as few as I want. I also like that through coloring it in, I'll be able to see, wow, I took a ton of Bulgarian lessons this year, but not very many Italian or something like that. That's overall why I really love this language color coding system. I love that I can just look at things and immediately see how much I've done in one language versus another. And then next to that, I have this little bookshelf book tracker spread. I used to be a super avid reader. It would not have been difficult for me to read a hundred books in a year at all. I was that kid in middle school that would finish like a novel a night, but in high school and college, I really lost that reading habit. Last year, I read 13 books and 12 of them were for school. So this year, I'm really trying to build up my reading habit, get myself reading 50 books. That's a little less than one a week. I think that I can do it if I just stick to it. So what I did currently was I just drew out the books that are linked to certain specific reading goals I have for languages I'm studying. So for example, I know I want to read three books in Spanish, four books in German, so I drew out four German books, outlined them in purple so I know it's for German, same with Spanish with the blue, and then there's also space for me to add more books because obviously this is not 50. I didn't set specific goals for some languages, like I just said that I wanted to read more books in French than in English this year, so what I'm going to do is just draw those in, color them in in red when I do that, but for now they're not necessarily on this shelf, but hopefully this will be all filled up by the time the year ends. Next, we move on to a tracker I've been doing for a few years now. This is my overall kind of schedule or year outline for the year. This year I am planning in quarters instead of semesterly or just monthly, which was what I did previously. So what I did was I just added a secondary outline that signified where each quarter was. The symbols in here represent languages that I'm studying with the square, languages that I'm working on improving with the triangle, and languages that I'm working on maintaining with the circle. I only like to finalize this once the month is actually starting, so what I do is I put it in in pencil, and then when the month is about to begin I will go through and do it in pen. So you can see I've got January done in pen and then the rest of quarter one, since I've already planned that out, done in pencil. And then because I'm moving in April, I don't really want to really rigidly plan the other quarters quite yet. I've been waiting to move to a quarterly system since I was a freshman in college, but I'm especially excited to be doing it this year since I'm moving right at the start of quarter two. It meant that I very much so knew what this first quarter looked like, but not so much the other quarters. So once I move in April and have a better gauge of what life looks like, I am going to plan out these other quarters. I would have done it just at the start of this year, but because I am undergoing a very major life event, I wanted to leave myself some room there. So I just put sticky notes that are what I am currently planning on doing during those quarters. But if you look at these too closely, you will definitely see that all of that is definitely still very iffy. I just don't want to really decide a lot of this until after I move and have that better picture of what life is like. Speaking of quarters, then we have my quarter one goals all written out on the next page. So up top we have again just my general goals and then I put my focus for the quarter, so the languages that I am really pushing myself to improve. The hierarchy is present here again, so you've got Bulgarian and ASL up top because they're my focus. German because it's my secondary focus, Spanish I put next to it because I may at some point in quarter one switch to that as the secondary focus, French and Italian which are the languages I'm just trying to maintain, and then I just made a list of those dabbling projects once more. I'll check these off as I do them and maybe even add a date that I did them by. I think it would be nice to be able to look back at the end of the year and see when I accomplished my goals. How I got all of these goals is I sat down and I looked at my yearly goals and then figured out what of those things I could focus on this quarter. If they were bigger things, like reading the whole Percy Jackson series in German, I broke that down, so I'm going to work on finishing the first book, starting the second book. I added up monthly tasks, like one movie a month in German becomes three movies over the course of the quarter, and just overall found tasks that I could begin to work on to really build up to those year-long goals. And then finally, the next page is something that I really figured out this past year, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I previously tracked which language or languages I did each day in order to see which ones I maybe hadn't touched in a while or which ones I was doing way more frequently than others. And that worked really well for me in college, but now that I'm able to dedicate a little bit more, I guess, 
stable time to languages and not only really study on breaks and occasionally during semesters inconsistently. I wanted something that would not only make sure I was having contact with all of the languages pretty consistently, but also that showed me what types of things I was working on for each language so I could stay balanced or put more effort into a skill that I was struggling with. So what I've got here is five categories, I suppose you could call them, of language activities. So I've got studying, speaking, reading, writing, and listening. And then I also have the date. So each day I just put in what I did for each language in the column that makes sense for it. I really like this compared to my old spread as I can not only look at it at a glance and see which languages I've had a lot of contact with and which ones I haven't had so much contact with, but I can also get a picture of where my study has been focused. And because I'm writing out what I'm doing and how long I'm spending, I also am going to be able in the future to look back and see kind of where I was at in my language study. And that is how I've been setting up my language bullet journal for the year. So I am really excited to get to use it for 2021. Like I said, I found a lot of spreads that work really, really well for me in 2020, and I've built upon those and made things that I think are really going to help me this year. I'm also so excited to have my life on a quarterly system, so that way my life and my language learning and polyglot progress and everything can finally line up. And if people are interested, maybe at the end of 2021, I can flip through and show you all of my spreads, because that January spread is not going to be the only language log, and if I find other things that I want to to track or make note of in the future, maybe I will write those out as well. But until then, I hope that this gave you some ideas for your bullet journal if you're interested in tracking your language learning progress or that you just enjoyed watching it. My camera's about to die, so I'm gonna get going as fast as possible. I will see you next Wednesday, and remember, practice makes progress.